the blurb of this movie just absolutely hooked me. It wasn't the title. The, the title's a bit shit, isn't it? Tin Can. So Tin Can is a new sci-fi movie, and my god is this one fucking bleak. It's set in a world where a deadly plague is just taking over the world, and it's getting there very quickly. It's not a COVID movie, I fucking swear it's not. Don't worry. Now we're following Freck, she's a scientist, specifically... <coughs> fucking, what is it again? She's a parasitologist. Didn't know it was a word. Didn't know it was a job. I've learned two things today. But we open on a bleak introduction and it cuts into the scientist working away here. Just gonna call her scientist from now on because fucks in parasitologist all the time. Parasitologist. It, it doesn't work with the accent. We learn through a voiceover that this plague is just taking over very quickly. We don't quite get the effects of it, but we just know shit's bad and Fred's here to deal with that. She works in like a pristine lab and her and her man John are just studying the effects and trying to come up with a cure for this. There's not too much shady business to begin with. There's some subtle hints which do pay off off later, which is great at how subtle they were. But not long into the movie, she gets knocked out and she wakes up in the titular tin can. Now this tin can, it is just a pod and it's like a matrix chamber. You know, she's all hooked up. It's like she's a fucking battery for somebody. And her job is now to work out where the fuck she is, how she got here, and really what is going on. After all of this, she wants to still help people. The undertone to all of this is still that she wants to do good and help the whole of humanity through finding a cure for this plague. And they do that in a very nice, natural way through the dialogue. So she wakes up in this tin can and it is cramped. Like the camera and we as an audience, we are in there with her. And there is not much wiggle room for her. She's pulling tubes out and it doesn't cut away. So if you don't like watching like medical dramas and things like that, some of these bits you might need to cut away for. I personally did at some bits. But whilst in here, she is just studying the room, trying to work out as much as she can. But while she's in here, she's studying this tin can. I'm going to call it a pod from now on because fuck saying that the whole time. While she's in her pod, she is trying to work out as much as she can about this room. You know, some lights come on. They're in sequence. There's clearly more lights that aren't turned on just yet. So what does it mean when one comes on? She's trying to work out a way to escape this whole time, what all the tubes mean. And while she's having a look around, she hears a knock. And it turns out her man, John, is in a pod just along from her. We don't see him. We don't cut to his pod, but we just get the voices from other people around because there's John and a few other characters. Whether it was colleagues of hers or people that she's just heard of or known about. It's these people that are trying to work out a bit more about why they're here and how to get out. And in line with her trying to help people, when you hear another person in a pod waking up, she is the first one to call out and tell them about the tube down their mouth, how to remove it, a bit around the scenario. So that's never lost on her, even though she's going through this herself. She is still wanting to make sure people are doing okay and doing their best in the worst situation possible. We learn a little bit more around these pods. These are cryo chambers, basically. The way we learn this and a lot around the movie, the characters, is just done through very natural dialogue. Because these are all scientists and people kind of top of their fields, they will all have so much knowledge around their own subjects. And so when they're talking to each other, it doesn't feel like an exposition dump, but it does feel like people helping each other out and kind of collaborating their combined knowledge to just get out the situation. You know, they're even trying to chalk up how long they've been in the room for. One person throws out that it must be over a year, whereas Fred is very aware of even down to muscle ash. Muscle atrophy. She knows that it can't be more than two weeks based on how she feels. So that's just an example of what I mean by they're helping each other out with just their own knowledge. The movie has flashbacks and they're played out of sequence. They're played kind of backwards. So whatever the opposite of chronological is, it's that. So we get kind of the most recent, we work back in time. Because some of the conversations will hint at something. You don't quite know what's gone on. But then through these flashbacks, we learn more of why the characters have ended up in the situation they're in. This was a voluntary program. However, Fred didn't fucking volunteer for it. So she has a lot of questions. But once we hit the halfway mark, and it's not really a major spoiler, but she does escape the pod. And then a lot of it starts following these people. Like at first I was thinking they looked like Cybermen for any like old school Doctor Who fans, but more so it looks like an unlockable costume that you can customise in Halo Infinite. I've not played in a while, but I'm sure you can. Now this infection, we get glimpses of it. You get glimpses earlier than I would have liked to have seen in the movie. However, it's fucking good. Like it's gross and horrible and I would never want anything like that. But you start getting the kind of full effects of it. You get glimpses to it earlier on in the movie of like a minor infection, but you do see the full infection taking over someone and the impact of it. And it is a cool design. Horrible, 
but cool. One of the people that are in the near pods, we meet him early in the movie, and he just keeps mentioning a lot of kind of god things in it as well. So I'm not sure if the movie was trying to go for some kind of narrative like this. It's not what I took from it, but it felt a little bit forced that this older guy just kept talking about god. It's not throughout the whole movie, but what I mean is any time he spoke, it was about god. Whilst we're out the pod, weirdly, when you've got more room to walk about, the movie slows down. Because while she's in there, we're learning everything we can and she's trying to escape, the pace is really good for a tiny little pod. But then when she's out and we're following the fucking Master Chief, the movie crawls a little bit. For the absolute most part, it is building really good tension. But I'd be lying to you to say it keeps up the pace throughout the whole movie. It just slows down just slightly at certain points. But without going through the specifics and spoiling various points in the movie and kind of revelations, what I took away was this overall question between her and John and kind of their philosophies here. You've got Fred who's wanting to cure the disease and save humanity. And then you've got John, who's wanted to go into this cryo-freezing and wake up once it's been resolved. So what would you do? If you had the expertise, would you try and focus on saving all of humanity or saving yourself? You know, you can't be too sure if the cure is going to work in time to save humanity before everyone, including yourself, is infected. But then on the flip, you've got John who's wanting to cryogenically freeze himself and create this whole thing where people just wake up in a better world. But you also don't know when you're going to wake up, how the world will be, and how receptive they'll be to you in their new world. It is an interesting question. And I've thought about it since watching the movie and I honestly couldn't tell you which one I would rather be. I would love to say save humanity because of what I've got going on right now, but you're putting a risk on either one of these options, aren't you? Fred is great, she's immediately likeable. Once we pass that halfway mark and she's out the pod, while she's still in the movie, there's obviously going to be a lot less of her since we're not just stuck in with her, but that's when it takes the time to start exploring some other characters and the facility that they're in. You know, it's never through dialogue, but you do learn a few of the rules, why what's happening's happening. You know, it's a show don't tell for the second half of this movie. And while the two ideas don't necessarily butt heads around curing or freezing yourself, just the fact that there is that kind of indirect conflict is clearly just brimming under the surface when they have the conversations about why they're here and what they're doing. Because Fred seems to be the only one that's still trying to help people and cure people. Now what would I be saying about Tin Can? Other than the fucking name, make time for this movie. If you like not only sci-fi but also a kind of claustrophobic movie and story, one that's not going to beat you over the head with exposition and dialogue, great movie. The performances themselves I'm not going to remember remember, you know, weeks from now. However, the kind of undertone and theming of this movie is one that I've no doubt will be thinking about for a while. I'll probably end up posing the question to everybody I know about what they would choose out the two. But like, have you seen Tin Can? If you have, what did you think of it? Do we agree or disagree? And this is just that place where I like to look at these sorts of movies and try and find a few hidden gems for myself, but also recommend to you guys. So if you haven't yet, please do consider hitting subscribe. It really does help out the channel and it lets me know you're enjoying this. But as always, thank you so much for watching.